Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with cornflake corn cake. That's right, we're using cornflakes to make a corn cake, which by the way is nothing more than a moister, sweeter version of cornbread. In fact, if you want, you could actually call this cornbread, since a lot of people don't eat cake. And trust me, they're really going to want to eat this. So we will do whatever it takes, since this really is amazing. And to get started, what we'll do is take a buttered cake pan, and we will flip it over, and then we'll fold a piece of parchment like a paper airplane, and we'll place the point in the center, and then we'll cut where it meets the edge. And I'm no geometry expert, but I believe that length is called the radius. But anyway, if we cut it there and then unfold it, we should have a circle of parchment that fits the bottom perfectly, which we will simply then press into place. And that's it. That's going to help our cake come out nice and clean. Or at least that's the plan. And once that's prepped, we can move on to mix up this very simple batter, which starts by whisking some white sugar into one large egg, which looks like two eggs because it broke when I put it in. And what we'll do is give this a vigorous whisking for about a minute or until the mixture looks kind of light and fluffy. And normally when I'm doing something like this, I'll have a plate or a trivet next to me. So once I finish using a spoon or whisk, I can set it down before adding the next ingredient. And the reason I'm telling you this is because you guys are after all the Jordan pools of not losing control of your tools. And speaking of disappointment, if you don't set it on a plate or trivet, when you add the melted butter, it could fall out onto the floor and make a big mess. So yes, that was unfortunate. But I did clean up and regroup since we never let the food win. And besides that melted butter we just added, we will also add some plain yogurt as well as some whole milk. And I know I do usually use buttermilk for cornbreads and corn cakes, but everybody gets upset because they never know what to do with the rest of the buttermilk. So since plain yogurt seems to be a lot more common and easier to use up, I decided to go with the yogurt milk combo and it really did work out beautifully. And then what we'll do is give this a quick whisk until everything's combined before we finish this off with our dry ingredients. The first of which would be some cornmeal. And either coarse like I'm using here or medium grind will work. Okay, I usually do use medium, but I didn't really notice much of a difference. And then we'll also want to add some all-purpose flour, followed by a little bit of salt, some baking powder, and then a little touch of its good friend, baking soda. And then we'll grab our whisk again and give this another mix, being careful not to knock everything out of the bowl. And then once all that's been stirred together, we will add the last ingredient and star the show, a couple cups of cornflakes. I know, I can't believe it either. But anyway, we'll toss those in and then fold everything together with a spatula. And to say the batter is going to look strange is an understatement. All right, it really is going to have a bizarre appearance, but somehow, some way, this bakes up into something absolutely gorgeous. And that's it. Once everything's mixed and our batter's looking a little something like this, we can transfer that into our cake pan, which could, if you want, also be a baking dish or that square pan you use for your brownies. Okay, pretty much anything with a similar volume will work. But anyway, no matter what we're using, we'll go ahead and spread that evenly and smooth out the top at which point we'll scatter over about another half cup of our cornflakes, distributing those as evenly as possible. And then once scattered, we can use our fingertips to do some fine tuning and we'll sort of ever so lightly press those into the surface. And it's this final flaking that gives this corn cake its fabulous show-stopping appearance. And it really does come out looking different than any other cornbread or corn cake I've ever seen. And then once that's set, we'll give this the old tappa tappa to settle everything down, at which point it's ready to transfer into the center of a 400 degree oven for about 25 minutes, or until it looks like this. Oh yeah, if you did not tell someone what this was, they would totally guess it was a cornflake cake. Right, they might not say cornflake corn cake, but they will know it's a cake, and cornflakes are hard to miss. And speaking of cakes, to check for doneness, we will test the center with a skewer, which if cooked enough should come out totally clean, and mine did. And then what we'll do is let this cool in the pan for about 15 to 20 minutes before we remove it to a plate or platter. And the first step for that would be to go around with the tip of a knife just to make sure it's not stuck to the sides. And then once we've determined it's not, 
We will place a pan on top and flip it over, and it really should come right out. But if not, just give it a tap or two. And then once pan free, we will carefully, ever so carefully peel off that parchment paper. But under no circumstances should we ever serve it with this side up. Oh no, we're going to take a plate and flip this back over to reveal one of the most beautiful sights in the history of cereal-based cornbread slash cakes. I mean, come on, how gorgeous is that? I mean, the only way this thing gets more stunning is if we place one perfect strawberry in the middle, at which point we can take any and all contractually obligated pictures, which I did while waiting for this to fully cool down, which eventually it did. So I grabbed a knife and cut out a nice piece, and I plated it up and garnished with that same strawberry. You know, I really should have bought more than one strawberry. But anyway, I grabbed a fork and dug in. And that, my friends, was truly outstanding. Okay, if you're a fan of cornbread or corn cake, or anything in between, I think you really are going to love this. And originally, the idea to include the cornflakes was all about the flavor, since I assumed they would taste really nice. And they certainly did. But what I didn't expect, is what those cornflakes would do to the texture, which is not that easy to explain, but I'm gonna try. Right, sometimes when we make corn cake, we will include fresh whole kernels of corn, and sometimes before we add them to the batter, we will pan fry them or roast them, so they get extra sweet and caramelized and kinda chewy. Well, believe it or not, that's sorta of what the texture of this is like. Right, those little pieces of cornflake are kinda chewy and sweet and corny, and while it might take a few forkfuls to get used to it, and for your mouth to acclimate to the awesomeness, this becomes, texturally speaking, very, very, very addictive. As in, be careful, you won't be able to stop eating this. And I'm pretty sure this is going to be one of those recipes where like 75% of the people that make this will agree with me and think it's one of the greatest things they've ever eaten. But there will be like 25% of people that will find this texture so confusing and disconcerting that they just won't be able to allow themselves to love it, which is a shame. All right, if there is any corn cake that deserves love, it is this one. And if you did want to make this closer to cornbread than corn cake, that would simply be done by adding a little less sugar and exactly how much less you would have to experiment with. But you could definitely make this more savory. Oh, and speaking of savory, let me go ahead and finish up with one quick tea shot since I did serve a piece of this with my famous lazy, hazy beef chili, and I call it lazy because there's no chopping involved and almost no work, and I call it hazy because it's cooked with a hazy IPA. So please stay tuned for that. But in the meantime, no matter what you serve this with, I really do hope you give it a try soon. So please follow the links below for the ingredient amounts, a printable written recipe, and much more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.